Well, thanks for taking the time to, to be with us, Lisa. Uh, the first question I wanted to ask was uh, how your new role is going at CoreLogic. I know people obviously know your name is pretty synonymous with uh, banking and uh, a long career at ING Direct. Obviously now you're at, at CoreLogic RP Data. Tell us a little bit about the, the new role. Yeah, well it's very exciting. Um, I, I've long been a believer that data and the insights that can, you can capture from data uh, are uh, the key competitive strategic differentiator. Uh, in all businesses, about, uh, particularly in financial services. In an era where products are increasingly becoming highly commoditised, uh, price is a blunt and somewhat transitory lever uh, to really engage and, and capture the heart, customer's heart and mind. Organisations need to do that through insights, through data. And that is what uh, CoreLogic is uh, preeminent uh, within. So. Uh, you know, very simply, what does CoreLogic do? It uh, identifies and manages growth opportunities. It helps improve an organisation's performance and mitigates risk. And it does this through insights captured through, through data. With uh, the experience you've had in the banking space, obviously in terms of customer, you know, uh, digital delivery and, and, and you know, customers and, and data and, and, and that sort of stuff, and now coming to work at CoreLogic, what are your views in terms of the use of data in financial services? Uh, there's been you know, a, a lot of talk around uh, opening up data in the banks mm. so that you know, there can be more innovation and this sort of stuff. We just had a uh, Productivity Commission you know, paper come out on it. It looks like the wheels are slowly turning. Have you got any thoughts on, on that? Oh, certainly. Uh, so I, I, I think we need to be careful uh, in the debate about open data. Uh, to distinguish between what I'd call macro level depersonalised anonymous data uh, and uh, customer level uh, data, which of course is, needs to be respected for privacy and, and, and regulatory uh, uh, reasons. Um, and you know, a, a good example of where uh, you know open data and sharing of data, particularly between banks, will uh, you know further the uh, the interests of customers um, and I believe manufacturers are, are alike is in comprehensive credit reporting, um, where Australia is uh, you know a laggard when you look at uh, the uh, cohort of OECD countries who've been you know in this space for many 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 years. Uh, and uh, we're uh, unusually, because we're usually right up the pointy end of uh, uh, trends and initiatives um, somewhat lagging there. Um, and I actually you refer to the productivity report, there was a reference in that very report to say that, you know, if by the middle of next year 40% of uh, data hasn't been, uh, uh, isn't part of the, uh, the base that they would, um, you know, consider mandating uh, uh, the, the opting in, so which is it, it is not a, splay, a place you really want to want to get to. But um, I, I think when you have, if you use that as one examples of many, uh, that has a positive constructive impact on um, a financial ecosystem. You can see, you know, the, the regulator, the government, saying this is a, a, a good thing. You know, I'd like to think that in many other examples, uh, we, we can move down that part paying respect, of course, to privacy, security uh, as well. Um, well, this is the funny thing. It comes at an interesting time because you've, you, you're seeing almost a ramp up of regulation and oversight and fears about security and things like that. But at the same time, you've got this argument about opening up data and, and, and innovation. And it seems like the regulators are you know, behind both, I guess. You know, I guess they're I just cautious. Yeah, but uh, again, if you you know access and o open access to to data is about discerning trends and patterns and and comparabilities, um, and that can be incredibly useful when you're able to see an ecosystem of data and discern patterns and trends and comparability. That's when you you get the stimulus to be predictive and be predictive for better outcomes for the customer. So, uh, you know, there's, a, there's a, a lot of enormous benefit that 
access to, to data data can give you know and at the end of the day it, it, it is it's how you use it and how you marry it and integrate it and align it to a customer's ap strategic appetite that that's when you get the co competitive differentiator so um, if there are fears about losing a competitive advantage I think those fears are shallow because it, it's like most things in life it's it's actually how you how you use it, it's like strategy, it's how you implement it, yeah, sure. that, that really matters. And, and again, looking at comparable jurisdictions, if, if there are any indication that's, that you know, the, the, the trend and the appetite be before more open, uh, fluid sharing of data with the right safeguards in place is definitely where the world is heading. What, what would your advice, I guess, be to, to mortgage brokers? Do you think they should be trying to use more digital platforms in their own service? or? Should they be seeing it as a competitor? What are your thoughts? There is uh, definitely threat on the periphery and a periphery of their customer base who will, who, who may use uh, the digital broker. But I also think there's a, the opportunity outweighs that threat if they can utilise the benefits that uh, uh, digital data platforms bring out, incorporate them into their business but also um, use them as an input to a, a higher level of service for their customers. Because what these, these platforms do is yes, they can do an end-to-end -end, um, offering on a probably, fair, dare I say, commoditized basis, yeah. but they can also, uh, they can be harnessed to provide a deeper level of insight into particular customer habits, behaviors, and, and co uh, cohort characteristics. So don't ignore, embrace, integrate, and utilize. That, that's the advice I, I, I would give. Lisa Class, thanks very much. Thank you.